Especially now with the new covenant, with these laws written on your heart and you put on your mind, that same law people say is done away with. It can't be done away with if it's written on your heart. Welcome to Walk Like a Hebrew. I'm Jody O'Dell. This podcast is a continuation of those stories we hear around Sukkot campfires when we meet fellow believers who have found themselves in pursuit of a Torah-observant lifestyle. Where did you come from? How on earth did you get here? What was it? What was that thing that caused you to go from mega church Christian or Seventh-day Adventist or agnostic or Catholic to this life of rejecting biblically unclean food, observing the Sabbath day, and celebrating God's feasts instead of man's traditions? Everyone's story is different. My guest today is Jordan Thomas of Riverside County, California. Jordan is a student at Cal State San Bernardino, and he's also the musician you're hearing on today's episode. This song is called Back to the Root, and you can hear more at the end of the episode. We talk about his megachurch background, how he came to learn about replacement theology, and how important it is to never stop learning and growing in your faith. Walk Like a Hebrew is listener-supported. Please consider making either a one-time or recurring donation by visiting sheholdsforth.com slash donate, or by subscribing to podhero.com and following Walk Like a Hebrew. We now have Walk Like a Hebrew merchandise available in our Etsy store. You'll find hoodies, mugs, t-shirts, and more at etsy.com slash shop slash walk like a Hebrew. Welcome to Walk Like a Hebrew. I'm here with Jordan Thomas of Southern California. How are you doing today, Jordan? I'm well, thank you. And thank you again for having me. Oh, I'm really, I'm really glad to have you. Thank you. Can you introduce yourself? Sure. I'm Jordan Thomas, 22 years old. I'm a college student at Cal State San Bernardino, a musician, singer, and writer, as well as a minister of uh, music and worship. Cool. Where are you a minister at? I minister at my local church, Grace Family Church in Ontario, as well as via social media, part of a ministry in Colorado. Ocean Wave Ministries. Cool. Well, I've heard you sing on your Instagram account, and it's absolutely delightful. I really enjoy it. Please, God. Tell me, how long have you been uh, keeping Torah? Um, well, for me, I can be nitpicky, so semantics is a matter of me. For me, it's pursuing Torah rather than keeping for now, because I believe I won't fully keep Torah until I'm with Yeshua, and until then, all I can do is by His power and help strive to keep what I'm capable of keeping. Amen. It's been a year for me. A year? Yes. And so where were you before that? What kind of faith practice did you have before that? I was in what is called non-denominational for the most part. I attended a mega church almost for a decade, but I wasn't really getting fed as much as I should have been. It was at best service level. And after services, I met with a small group, and those tend to be edifying for me. Yeah. But still, there was no, um, it was missing that Hebraic background. It was missing that ancient background. It was, for the most part, it was sound in doctrine, but it was missing the Jewishness, that essence. Mm. And to me, it's a strong component. So what was it that caused you to discover the Jewishness of your faith? Funny, it's a book by Paul Wilbur, A King is Coming. And through that book, I learned about replacement theology and how appalling it is, to be honest. I think the idea stems out of ignorance and arrogance alike, because when you read in context Romans 11, Jewish believers aren't the ones grafted into the olive tree, but we are those who are are not Jewish by descent or from an ethnic background. And knowing that, it should cause a believer to have humility because they could be in that same place. That's why I'm slow to pass judgment for those who are Jewish but don't yet believe. I think we're too quick as a church to point the finger at them, at their disobedience over time when we have plenty that we don't want to be exposed on our behalf to. (laughs) Ah, Very astute observation. Wow. Yeah, you're right about that. So I didn't know that Paul Wilbur wrote a book. Yeah, he wrote a few. The one I have is The King is Coming, and that stoked to me a, a passion for the Jewish people and Messianic worship. And through replacement theology, I looked up on YouTube to know more about it. And through that, it has led me to a series of teachings by a Messianic rabbi by the name of Greg Hirschberg. Mm, yeah. Who is now my second favorite teacher after the Holy Spirit. 
And it's been a blessing to me. Awesome. So were you like involved in ministry and everything in your mega church? Not really. I just went to sermons pretty much and met with um, my study group. But I was in school. We had um, Bible study in college. Oh, okay. Yeah. So since your eyes have been opened and you've started walking this way, are you still attending a Sunday church? I am, but it's a lot more sound in doctrine. Okay. There's a whole Bible with believing church. But as far as I've known, I've not heard any preaching on the uh, Sabbath and feast days, as far as I know, so far. Yeah. But it's a good fellowship, and it's important to not throw the, the baby out of the bathwater. As I once heard it, chew the meat and spit out the bones. Yes, exactly. I'm happy to hear you say that. So what have you changed thus far? What kind of things are you doing different now that you have seen the light, you could say? I'm definitely a, a lot more prayerful, especially with regards to those around me in terms of not really seeing things as I do. That's not the main goal, I should say. But for um, at least to have an open mind and open themselves up to the Hebraic mindset and what it has to offer, because it's not about becoming Jewish. I've always gotten the uh, response that my theology is new. It's nothing new. It's from the ancient path. It's the faith once delivered. It's just new to somebody else because yeah. they never really heard it, but it's not really new. You're right. I don't push it on people. I try to just give bits and pieces over time. That's a good policy. So have you been keeping the Sabbath and the feast days this year? I have been a year now keeping Sabbath and it's been a blessing, but it's difficult when you're the only one in your household doing <laughs> <Yes>. so. <laughs> um, yeah. I try to not go anywhere, but if I do, I try to not buy anything. And it's not about, I don't want the obedience to be mechanical, but out of genuine curiosity and genuine trust that what God is saying is good regarding the Sabbath and for our edification and for our benefit. Because ultimately, that's what it really is. It's not for salvation. It never was designed for salvation. The law itself is never designed for salvation. It's for our benefit and guidance. And the more we see it that way, I think the more people will hopefully get on board when, if more eyes are open. Yeah. Do you live with your, your family? Yes, my brother and my dad and stepmom. Okay. And none of them are on board with this? No. Oh. Well, you never know. My brother and I are the only ones saved, but my brother is more so the um, Protestant type. Ah. Well, you never know. You really... <laughs> I've heard some stories about people figuring it out years and years later. When you're passionate about something, it really shows sometimes in a way you don't want it to be <laughs> manifested in. <laughs> yeah. I eat my temper sometimes, but still, we need to show grace the same way he showed us. Mm, yes. So have you started eating biblically clean then? I have. I actually went vegetarian. Oh, wow. How's that going? Pretty good. The challenge is trying to find a sufficient mean to gain weight. Yeah, yeah, that can be hard. I was vegan for a year, years before I was ever walking in Torah, but it was very hard to stay nourished. Yeah, it's been that way. But that's an easy way to avoid the arguments. I noticed that when I was a vegan, my extended family, they didn't care. Nobody cares if you're a vegan or a vegetarian. Well, mine, Mike, because I'm, I'm skinny. <laughs> <laughs> well, but I just mean they, they're not going to object to it the same way that some people ob object oh, yeah. to when somebody gives up pork because it's biblical. Nobody cared when I was a vegan. Nobody cared. They're just like, oh, that's cool. Here, I've got, you know, I've got mushrooms in the fridge, right? <laughs> yeah. But you say, I don't eat pork because of Leviticus 11. And all hell breaks loose, literally. That's what gets me. The same people want to bring up Leviticus 11 when it talks about same sex. And rightfully so, but you can't have one without the other. Exactly. <laughs> oh, Jesus died so we can eat bacon, but he didn't die so that we can have same sex marriage. That's kind of the dichotomy. And I, I've heard all the arguments. Oh, well, Jesus repeated it in the New Testament or Paul repeated it in the New Testament. And so that makes it valid. Nobody ever said not to eat pork in the New Testament, so that means we don't have to not eat pork. It's idolatrous, to be honest, because one, you're elevating Paul above Yeshua, and two, you're elevating your own understanding above him, and you think you know parts of the Bible better than those who wrote it. <laughs> yes, yes. God is omniscient and all-knowing. He knows what happens to us when we consume pork. I would think we want to take heed of that. Exactly. Oh, I love the way you put that. Thank you. It's not a salvation issue. No. 
Well, it shouldn't be. No, it's not a salvation issue, but it is a sanctification issue. Yeah. I've heard it said that the Torah is the constitution of the kingdom of God. When you become a citizen of that kingdom, you need to start living by the laws of that kingdom. You didn't get in by keeping the laws. You got in by God's grace. Yeah. But once you're there, now you've got to start obeying the laws of the kingdom. Not to mention the ones that apply to you, too, because people ask me if you keep all 613 or so. One, I can't because laws that are for women, I can't obviously keep. Yep. And the laws for the high priests. And the judges. Exactly. Well, and even Yeshua couldn't keep all those. I know. Yeshua was not a woman. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> he was not a woman, so he could not keep the laws of Nida. Uh, you know, he couldn't, he was not a high yeah. priest. He didn't keep the high priest laws. The church teaches that Jesus kept the Torah perfectly, and then they add, so that we don't have to. Yeah. Which is completely man made doctrine. But I think they're misunderstanding the word keep. Yeah. I can't remember it in the, in what it is in the Hebrew. I was about to point that out because. I believe it's Shema, and it has more than one meaning. It means to guard. To guard. Or to cherish. Cherish. Ooh, that's a good one. Instead of keep. Exactly. Because keep to me is kind of vague to begin with. Well, keep doesn't necessarily mean do. Yeah. Keep means to protect. Keep close to you. Exactly. Yeah. Well, and I always go back to, you know, in the English, when you think of like a an old Scottish castle, it was known as a keep. And the idea was that if a clan was under attack, all of the people would come into the castle, the keep, where they were going to be kept safe. Mm -hmm. So it seems to me that our job when we call ourselves keepers of the Torah is to protect those laws and not let somebody disparage them. Yeah. And not let them be forgotten and not let them be kicked aside. Exactly. Not to let anybody... Trample on the fruit. Exactly. To say that they've been abolished, which also doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Because we do that now with the man-made laws of the land. And they're about 30,000. <laughs> I can't yes. keep track. Have you ever had anybody say that that's too many laws and we just can't keep them? The 613. <laughs> I had, well, I had somebody that I was talking to about keeping the Torah. And he said, that's just too many laws. We can't keep them all. And I turned it around on him because he is an IRS tax attorney. <laughs> and I said, what do you do for a living? Mm. And how many laws are in the United States tax code? Do you keep them all? <laughs> <laughs> and since you can't keep them all, does that mean you shouldn't keep you any? Shouldn't. Because if you didn't keep any, you'd be in prison right now. Exactly. He was a little, you know, taken aback by that, but it didn't change his mind. People learn in their own time, in their own will. Yes, yes. All we can do is plant seeds. But it also goes forth to not allow pride to creep in, too, because it often does. And I see it within the um, obedience to different sects. It's not our own doing. It must always be be by faith. Oh, yes. So we can get we can get prideful. And I see it all the time, even with trivial things, such as spelling and things like that. <laughs> yes, the trivial things. Didn't the Apostle Paul say something about arguing about the small matters? The Did he say trivial things? I can't remember. Unprofitable disputes about the door. Yeah. I tend to think that that's probably arguments about the name or arguments about the calendar. Or days when they begin. Exactly. <laughs> Do you get into conversations now with people who ask you what your religion is? Not very often, more so online than off, but I do sometimes at work because I met a few fellow Torah pursuing believers, which was a surprise to me. I work at Amazon. Oh, wow. And you didn't think you would see that there. But you meet all kinds of people. Torah pursuant people at Amazon, huh? Yeah. Is this like in the fulfillment centers or? Yes, that's why I work. Okay. Wow. And you have good conversations with them, huh? Yeah, well, things like the Sabbath and everything. So, but if you were to encounter somebody who was maybe a mainstream Christian or whatever, what would you call yourself? What would you say your religion is? I guess a follower of Jesus or Yeshua. Okay. The difference between Hebraic thinking and Greek thinking. Have you seen that change your life at all? Oh, it has. Well, for one, our faith is a faith of action. And simply acknowledging something isn't going to change it because it still remains. And of course, we ought to do actions accordingly based on God's will and timing. It brought a sense of richness and depth that I previously haven't had in the faith since adopting that uh, mindset. That you probably couldn't find anywhere else. Yeah. I think that's one of my favorite parts of this faith, the depth and the richness and the, I really do feel closer to Yahweh and Yeshua than I did before. I do too. And that's a blessing. Yeah. 
you're not becoming Jewish, but more Godish. Godish? <laughs> oh, that's perfect. <laughs> I haven't heard that one before. That's a good one. Seeing her leave the soul and thinking everything Jewish is bad, and that's not the case. No, it isn't. Have you had any conflict with anybody who thinks you're becoming Jewish or changing in some otherwise weird way? Um, not very much, but you learn to navigate through it, not let it get to you. And it's a way to deny yourself by not letting it consume you or not letting that be the focus and just simply focusing on Yeshua. Everything else will fall into place and either me or somebody else will show them the way. Mm. But it gets in conflict sometimes because of my temper and... At times I feel like a hypocrite because things like Sabbath and feast, but I still have a temper to deal with. But again, that's what God's grace is for. His grace is sufficient to help you obey. Yes. Wholeheartedly. Not to repeat that, but to continuously turn away. Yes. Especially now with the new covenant, with this law is written on your heart and put on your minds. That same law people say is done away with. It can be done away with if it's written on your heart. Oh, isn't that true? I never thought of it like that before. That's true. Well, so do you have any favorite resources, people you like to listen to, YouTube, books? My top three would be Best Yeshua, Greg Hirschberg, um, Triumph and Truth with Pastor Gary Simmons, and Ocean Wave Ministries with uh, Todd Aaron. Ocean Wave? Yes. And I have a lot more, but that's, I'm narrowing it down to three. You can add as many as you like. Well, they're local people, too. I learn a lot from them. Do you have a fellowship there, like a Sabbath-keeping fellowship outside of your Sunday church? Not yet. Online, I, I do. Okay. And then a few people that I go to Beth Yeshua, I'm edified by them that I've met via social media. Beth Yeshua, and that's the one in... Uh... Macon. Macon, Georgia. Oh, Macon. Oh, my gosh. She's in Georgia. And, and Triumph in Truth, you said? Yes. Who is that? Pastor Gary Simmons. He's based in Texas. He started out as a mega church pastor, and he came to tour. Cool. That's very unusual. Yeah. Have you got anything that you want to add that you think might be pertinent to the conversation? All I'm going to say is that um, definitely not an easy thing. It's a day-by-day process. And if we're not rooted solely in the Word of God as it is, we're going to we're not going to make it in the forthcoming tribulation. No matter how much we know, there's so much more we don't know. And I'm speaking to myself too, but we need to keep learning and being refined daily and being corrected and led to a truth which can only be found in God's word, his Torah, with faith. Yes. I might add, that's an important thing. Faith being an action word, not a... Not a mental acknowledgement. Well, I think that's it, Jordan. Thank you again for having me on. Yes, thank you so much for being on. I'm really, really grateful. Thank you for listening to Walk Like a Hebrew. Please check out Jordan Thomas's music on Spotify at Jordan Thomas. Like and share our Facebook page at Walk Like a Hebrew. Subscribe to Walk Like a Hebrew on your favorite podcast app or YouTube and follow us on Instagram. You can find links to the resources mentioned in this episode in the show notes on your podcast app by visiting our link tree on Instagram and Facebook or by visiting sheholdsforth.com. Please leave comments, likes, feedback, and good reviews whenever and wherever you can. May Yahovah bless you. We'll catch you next time.